Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miguel Fuentes, and today is Saturday, uh, for, uh, September the 8th. Been a long day today, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a Bible reading on Galatians chapter 3 with the English Standard Version Study Bible. Uh, again, as I uh, always mention, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of a commentary or or the application of that uh, chapter. And so, so yeah, uh, go, turn with me in Galatians chapter 3. And you can read this on your own. Let's see here. All right, Galatians chapter three. Oh, for this Galatians, who had be what you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this: Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law? Or by hearing with faith. Are you so foolish, having began by the Spirit, are you not being per perfect by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracle among you to do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith. Just as Abraham believed God and, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham in the scripture, foreseeing that God would just sorry, God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel before, uh, beforehand to Abraham, saying, And you shall all the nation be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed uh, along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who reply on the works on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. <coughs> now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the righteousness shall live by faith. Sorry, the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by being a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham may come to the Gentiles, so that we may receive the promised Spirit through faith. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man made covenant, no one uh, enters it or adds. To it once it has been ratified. Now, the promises were made to Abraham and to his offer, offspring. It is not said into the offspring, referring to many, but referring referring to one. Um, into your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law who comes. So, who came 430 years afterward does not enter a covenant fiercely eradicated by God so as to make the promise 
in vain, uh, void. For if, the, sorry, for if the inheritance comes by the law, it is no longer come by the promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It is it was added because of the transgressions until the offspring shall come to whom the promise had before made to had been made, and it was put in place through angels by a intermediate uh, meted, not an intermediate, uh, embrace more than one, but God is one. It is the law, then, contrary to the promises of God, certainly not. For if a, for if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sun, this is under sin, so that the promise by faith in, in Jesus Christ may be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we would had had captives under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guidance until Christ come, in order that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave or free, neither, uh, there is no male and female, for all are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs, according to the promise. So that's the end of chapter 3 of Galatians. Now, this chapter is is famous. Uh, are we, you know, talking about grace or the works of the law or by faith? And, and I like how Paul really puts this thing together because I understand as a believer that we're not under the law. You know, I, you know, God says, you know. You know, God, you know, we, we have the whole complete the word of God and we still got to obey. But I'm not saying to obey what the Old Testament has to offer, such as keeping the Sabbath, which, you know, it, 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 you know, you know, you, you can keep the Sabbath that you, that, that you want. You know, it, 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 it's, it's not a burden to me. To obey the word of God. It, and Paul is saying that those who are trying to say you cannot be saved, but you got to keep the, uh, the Torah in order for you to be saved, and which is adding salvation to works of the law. Um, Jesus fulfills the prophecies. That, that was written in the Old Testament. Uh, as I read to you, uh, if you saw the video Christ in the Old Testament, uh, I encourage you to watch that video. But uh, the righteous shall live by faith. You know, it's all about the faith. You know, um, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, talk about... Uh, uh, What's it called? I'm trying to remember the, the exact phrase. Um, <coughs> so faith comes by hearing and hear through the word of Christ or through the word of God. Okay. Well, when we hear 
his words as I'm reading to you, you're automatically, you know, as you're reading through the scriptures, you know, always, you know, write down some notes, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to really give you the understanding of what is the law and what is uh, faith through obeying through the, through the word of God. And it really, the, the book of Galatians is pretty uh, a good book to read if you are a new believer. Now, we don't keep uh, the Old Testament, but, you know, we don't have to. Christ fulfilled it, but you can. You know, you can keep the Sabbath. You can do dietary laws or civil laws or, or whatever you know, that God lays on your heart, you know, do it unto the Lord. And do not burn in another brother to keep the Old Testament. Because that's not, the Old Testament, you know, thank God for uh, seven-day Adventists, keeping the Sabbath, keeping the Ten Commandments. You know, we still got to keep the Ten Commandments because Christ fulfilled it, making it more up. You know, make make it to the next level, and so now, you know, don't don't be mistaken. Uh, mistaken, you know, I'm not I'm not saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying you know keep the Old Testament laws. We're in a new covenant. We're in a brand new relationship because you gotta understand the relationship with the Lord should be abiding in Christ and His words. You know, understanding what the Old Testament is all about is is the most primary focus uh, as a new covenant believer. You know, uh, you know, it's okay if you're if if the Lord leads you to keep the Sabbath or a certain day to rest on God to seek His face. But all I'm saying that I don't burden another brother or sister. To keep the Old Testament law. So may God bless you and keep you. And I'll see you again later.